Pagatavija. Pagaidit. Jā. Tā. Labdien. Hello, everyone. Today there will be a lecture delivered on Latvian history and Riga history. And your teacher, Aiga Brovere. The floor is your... Thank you. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Everyone, uh, can you see there is a chat, there is a tool of Word documents, and one of them is the game. Basically, it's like uh, a lot of letters and you need to find some words in it. And the second document is answers. So you can do it in your free time. Just save it in your uh, computer. So. Sorry, where where is it? In the chat. <laughs> Um, can you send it again? Because maybe because I came later, I can't see anything in the chat. Okay. Es well, no, Mandēš, nes tu līdz nosūtīš. No problem. I send to you. Okay. Just a minute. Tu līdz no. būs, un es tu līdz to visu. Tā, okay. Un tu līdz nosūtīš. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. Okay, I share the screen. I can't share the screen. Pagaidiet, tu līdās. Es nopļāpāju un neiedevu jums hosta tiesības. Kā ir? Ir. Ok, thank you. Tā, ok. Tu līdās. Need the beginning. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I still didn't find uh, the link that you, uh, the, the chat is empty for me, for the others maybe. Sarmita said that she Lita, will send no you. Tulit, tulit, just you a those. minute, Robert, tulit. Okay. Ah, okay. I said okay. all. Tulit, 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 just a minute, no, 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 you can uh, do it after our election, so. Ah, maybe. okay, I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Obviously. You don't need to worry. So, uh, my name is Aiga, and I will be your digital guide today. I work in the Museum of History of Riga Navigation, which is one of the oldest museums in Europe. And here you can see Niklaus Himselis. He was a founder of this museum. As you can see, he, he was born in Riga in 1729. He was a doctor and he traveled through the Europe and saw ideas to show collections which belong to the families, to other people. He returns to Riga and in his last will, on, he donates on. collections of his father, grandfather and what he collected himself to the city. He dies in 1764 and after nine years, city founds the museum of Himselish's museum it's the original name. Nowadays, the Museum of History of Figure Navigation. And in Himselish's museum, there was uh, very various collections. And basically, in that time, people collected everything they liked. So there was a lot of interesting things. For example, the chess piece from China, some things from Siberia, and so on. And, uh, but, it's very interesting that our museum is 20 years older than Art Museum in Louvre in France, in Paris. So we are very proud about it. Are you taking notes? Mm. Yeah? Uh, well, <laughs> so speaking about expositions, uh, we are showing history of Riga starting from the Stone Age till 1940 till the Second World War, till Russian occupation. And in these small pictures, you can see some of our exposition halls. It's a very pity that you can't see this museum right now or be in the museum, but I hope this COVID uh, will end someday and you will visit us uh, in person. So what we show, we show the story about uh, Port of Riga, medieval Riga, Riga under Pol Poland Lithuanian state under the Swedish state, Riga part of Russian Empire. And in 1918 and 18 November, uh, Latvia joined its independence, and we are showing this uh, time from 1918 till Second World War. Another branch, what we are researching is the history of navigation. And we are starting to show it from the 10th century. So 
from the 10th century till nowadays. So here you can see the Kogge, the 13th century German merchant ship who came here with the first uh, merchants and uh, Catholic missionaries. Another interesting um, room is silver cabinet. And we are showing uh, mainly silver things and uh, made here in Riga, starting from the 15th century. Those tools were used in the church and from the 17th century in uh, everyday life. For example, in the middle, you can see this plate. It comes from the 17th century. And uh, if someone wanted to become a part of Black Hat Association or Brotherhood, he needed to give very expensive gold or silver things. And um, for example, these plates were not used uh, to put on the table. They were placed on the wall like a paintings. And you can see these uh, small heads are the symbols of the black heads. And this is the top of the flag uh, used in all song and dance festivals. A colon hall, it's a part of our museum and it was built in the end of the 18th century in the style of classicism for the needs of the city library. After reformation in uh, 1526, uh, city collected all books uh, from previous Catholic churches and monasteries and founded one of the oldest public libraries in Europe. Bibliotheca Regensis, its original name. It was located somewhere in Riga Dome, monastery, previous monastery complex, but in the end of the 18th century, this hall was uh, built specially for this library needs. In the shelves, you can see here, there is our exponents. Uh, those were the bookshelves. This library was open for one day for two hours and people came here, uh, left the books, took the books and went home to read. In the wintertime, this uh, library was closed. And why is that? There is no fireplace. So you can imagine 18th century, no fireplaces, and there is a winter. It was very, very cold. Uh, here, here you can see Golo Hall from its balcony. This is our exposition dedicated to Riga part of Russian Empire, 18th century, 19th century. And on the wall, you can see this painting. This painting is made in the 19th century in the 30s. And it is a part when Riga was a part of Russian Empire. So the artist shows the Peter the Great who conquers Riga in 1710 as a conqueror and as a patron of arts and science. So you can see there is this fortification wall. It's a fortification wall of Riga city. So he destroyed the wall and comes inside as a conqueror. The artists uh, draw a sword here in this place. You can see it. There is this tribe, but then he thought that uh, Peter the Great looks too aggressive for this means of the painting. So he drove sword here, a lower. So it doesn't point to the citizen of Riga because this one uh, symbolizes the citizen of Riga who basically welcomes Peter the Great into the city. Uh, here you can see the art and science symbolism and this one, is the real cannonball built inside the wall of the painting. And there's a legend that Peter the Great shot three cannonballs to the Riga city. So one is built in this painting and other two are built in the powder tower in Old Riga. So when you will visit Old Riga, you will see these cannonballs too. Well, about this one, on the sailings of the Colonel Hall, you can see Catherine the second, the Russian Empress. She's dressed as Roman goddess Minerva or Athena. In the Greek mythology, the war and wisdom goddess. And on her chest, there is Medu head of Medusa. You know, this woman with the snakes instead of her. And here is all the symbol of the wisdom on her helmet. She holds the book, Nakaz. And there is two versions. First one says that uh, she loved Riga too much, so she didn't order anything to Riga. She said, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. There was no, like, uh, I order you to do this. And other version is that uh, she made a lot of laws in Russian Empire at that time. So it's the book of the laws she made. There is, uh-huh. 
And here we can uh, start the second part of our excursion, how old citizens of Riga lived. So this is another. So we are starting from the history of the Stone Age. The first inhabitants in territory of Latvia came here about 10,000 years ago. And they came, came from south. And it's the time when uh, in Europe, the climate was quite warm and reindeers uh, felt that it's too hot for them. So they migrated to the north. And of course, hunters went together with them. As you can see here, Riga is under the water in this picture. So uh, the first inhabitants lived near Riga, like 25 kilometers from Riga in Salzburg, Laukskola. And here you can see some tools they used. In Salzburg, Laukskola, in this settlement, archaeologists found more than uh, 2,000 flint tools and uh, more and several flint uh, nests. It's the place where these hunters were sitting around and making these flint uh, tools. And on the ground, they found uh, tools and some remainings of this flint the stone. And it's very hard to say to say and name these tools because we can't say how they were used. But here you can see arrowheads and knives. And in a uh, Neolith, they started to use these axes made from stone. The Bronze Age starts about 3,500 years, 5, years ago. And it's a time when bronze appears in these territories and people started to live in fortificated uh, hills or fort hills. For example, this axe made from bronze belonged to the richest man of the village. It's not this, it's, it's like a symbol how this person is very important. And uh, ladies could uh, use these bracelets or these needles. The, the Iron Age starts with our era. So the first uh, iron tools came here. They were not made here because we have bad uh, iron, this uh, material you use to make iron. It's, in, it's not in very good quality. And uh, you can see the ruches and jewelries made in this Iron Age. You speaking about amber. Basically, uh, starting from the Stone Age, we started to use amber as a jewelry, but uh, they didn't. Uh, they just uh, took this uh, stone and placed it on their dresses. And have you heard about uh, so-called amber road? Do you know what that is? Basically, Romans uh, came to these territories and brought uh, from um, uh, Latvians the amber and so called the road of uh, amber. So here you can see the coins of Roman Empire found in territory of Latvia and Riga. And uh, the first writing things and news about these territories comes from Tacitz. Uh, he wrote Germanica and he he's telling that far, far north there is a cold uh, gray sea and there, by, and there near the sea the wild tribes lives and these tribes are called Aisti and they are collecting uh, yellow stones, glasses from the seaside and they are wondering why tradesmen are giving them money from for this uh, amber. About a thousand years ago, it's so-called Viking times in history of Europe and Vikings came here. And for example, there is this uh, silver bracelet found in area of Riga. There is the sword with these marks and there is runestone. This runestone or originally is located in Sweden, but it tells about one Viking man who came here and died near, the, near River Daugava. Of course, he was buried in Latvian territory, but as in memoriam, this runestone was placed in Sweden. Of course, have you heard about Kursche? It's one of the Latvian tribes and uh, they came, for example, there was like exchange program because Vikings came here and Kursche went there to the Sweden. Uh, speaking about the citizens of Friga, uh, this area or old Riga, was inhabited starting from the 12th century. And there was two villages. For example, this is one here near Daugava. 
another near river, river Ridzene. Here you can see Rigas Azars. Uh, it's the widest place of this uh, of this river, and there was a first part of Riga city. Uh, citizens of Riga lived in very simple wooden buildings. Here you can see in these pictures how they looked like. In the middle of this uh, building, there was a fireplace, and under the floor there was some very small warehouse. And uh, all these uh, details are coming from archaeological excavations. In archaeological excavations, basically, you destroy this uh, archaeological monument, this object. So archaeologists are writing down everything, what they are finding, what they are seeing. And these are the paintings from archaeological excavations. It's uh, one layer of these archaeological excavations. So here you can see the buildings, the stones. Some other constructions, for example, these are like a road to walk. There is a fireplace here. Uh, speaking about the burial grounds, um, we have some from uh, Paganic times. And uh, basically, uh, when in the end of the 12th century, German merchants and uh, missionaries came here and they brought uh, Catholicism here. They built these churches and uh, near all these medieval churches, there's graveyards. And uh, here you can see one burial from these graveyards. And this one, it's, uh, it's very, very rare because it's uh, basically, it's a grave made from bricks. We have only a few found in Riga and others found in Sigulda. There is no other similar things here in Latvia at all. And here you can see one lady. So here is the photography from archaeological excavations. Here you can see the brooches here, the bin shaped bracelets. This is a drawing and this is how she could look like when she was alive in the end of the 12th century and in the beginnings of the 13th century. Uh, a little bit back, uh, speaking about the burials, um, people in that time lived in afterlife and so they buried this person in the best dresses with the jewelries and uh, ladies had knives as a symbol. Here you can see um, the brooches, the bracelets, rings and so on. Uh, speaking about the footwear, here you can see the boots from the ends of the 12th century, beginnings of the 13th century. And you can see they are very flat. In wintertime, it was quite cold. And uh, you can see these items, they attached them to their shoes so they could walk on the ice and in the snow. Another very interesting thing is this glow, but it's not knitted. It's made with one needle. It's like a braided glow from the 13th century, so more than, more than 700 years old. You can see it in the museum. And speaking about the jewelries, in Riga lived various tribes. Basically, we find these jewelries in graveyards, and the main citizens of Riga were Finugrians lives, and that's why Livonia, the medieval name of these territories. And uh, we find some other things from Zemgali, from Kurshi, and from German merchants. So, so these are the bin-shaped brushes, bin-shaped bracelets. And uh, on the other side of these bracelets, uh, there is marks. You couldn't uh, wear them as you liked. They are placed uh, on right or left hand in uh, order. So you could uh, find uh, the order on the other side of those uh, uh, bracelets. Spiral shaped bracelets, uh, these birds are very symbolic for uh, leaves. Then the ring of names, knives, keys, and these are the, basically from the claws of the bear. If um, some man wanted to marry, he needed to kill the bear and give uh, a jewelry or the ad adornments made from 
the nails of this bear or from the teeth of this bear. So after that, he gave it to his uh, beloved girl and then they get married. Uh, these are imported. Uh, these are the glass beds uh, from uh, Russia from the 13th, 14th century. And curry shells. I guess it's one of the oldest uh, currencies in the human history. Uh, they, came, they came to the territory of Latvia from the Black Sea and they were used as adornments in the late uh, Iron Age. And here you can see some uh, things who came here from, uh, from the east, the crosses. These are lunulos, uh, another Another adornment, a uh, name comes from Luna, the moon, where is a uh, full moon and the crescent moon. Here is a small horse and of course something made from embers. In Riga, uh, we, have, we have find many factories who made some things from embers and they were, they were basically located in wooden buildings which burned down several times and so we find these uh, uh, many pieces of amber just uh, melted together. So uh, this is the mask made from leather. Uh, it's from the 13th century. When archaeologists found it, they couldn't uh, tell what this item is. They see, they saw that it's not a shoe, it's not some footwear, but it's something interesting. So when restorators restorated this uh, item, they saw that it's the mask. And there is two ideas how it was used. First one, it was used in carnivals, and the second, it was used uh, for the medical needs. So, in the nose, they placed some medical herbs, and then walked around the city, basically a medical mask. Speaking about the uh, religion before Christianity, uh, here was the pagans, but we do not know. Oh, anything about uh, these gods. We have found uh, uh, these figures made from wood with the four, four faces, with one faces in Sigulda there is uh, like uh, one meter and 50 uh, centimeters tall figurine, but we don't know what god or deity uh, it's, uh, it shows. Uh, here you can see the head of the horse. The horse was the saint uh, animal for the lips. Uh, for example, we have found in archaeological excavations a woman uh, who was buried with the horse. Uh, so we are thinking that when she died, this uh, horse was a donation for her. So she was very, very important in uh, society. And uh, these heads of the horses were placed in the base of the house to protect the house from fire, from illness and all other cataclysms what could happen in the time. Uh, here you can see um, toys from the 13th century. Uh, this is so-called, uh, in Latin we are calling it it's like a, Mills game in translation, but it's like an ancestor of tic-tac-toe, if you know that game, you know. Uh, each player has nine uh, these pieces and uh, the idea is that you can't allow uh, your, the other player to place all these on the line, like here, here, here. If he places uh, all his three pieces on the line, he can take one of your uh, piece away. So loses that, who loses all of his, his playing pieces. This one is Rutsenis. Mm, the closest uh, translation could be Verling, Verli Gig, something like that. Uh, but Latvian name Rutsenis comes from Rukt, uh, it's like Rour. You could say that it's like Rourer, something like that. And in the end of this excursion, we will make modern uh, version of this toy. Uh, originally, it's made from the bones of the pig, but well, we will use a button. Uh, combs, uh, these are made in Riga, made from bone, and it's very, uh, they're very expensive in that time because it was a lot of work to make one 
for example, this two-sided comb. It's made from bones and it's placed piece to piece to make it whole. These are ear cleaning spoons. Uh, this one, this part you are holding in, uh, in your fingers and you clean your ear with this part of this spoon. Uh, this could be called like uh, the mirror box. It's very small, it's like two and two centimeters. And uh, we are thinking that inside of it, there was some, some cosmetics, for example, for lips or for cheeks. Uh, here you can see the map of Riga. Uh, this is uh, old Riga is here. So this is the old, old Riga where these two villages was. Uh, there is uh, St. Peter's Church, the Blahats House, so-called so new house. This is the first floor, first port of Riga city. These crosses shows uh, where we have found old medieval ships drowned in River Idzene. Nowadays, we don't have River Idzene in Old Riga. It's, uh, it was destroyed in the 17th century, basically when the Swedes made a new fortification system and uh, dug out the canal of Riga city, uh, they destroyed this River Idzene. So, uh, as I said, uh, Riga, citizens of Riga lived near two rivers, so there were fishermen. So you can see types of the boats they used. And there is a sturgeon. Here is one which is a uh, draw here. And there is these scales of the real sturgeon from archaeological excavations. So uh, this fish was uh, two to three meters long, very huge. And there is the legend that every hundred years in the midnight, big fish uh, comes from Dago and asks the person she sees, is the Riga ready? and the uh, citizens of Riga can't reply, yes, Riga is ready because big fish will destroy the city. Uh, so, mm, yeah, won't say that. If fish, if fish is asking you, is Riga ready, say no, it's not. So, here you can see one of the ships which was found in Riga. The first ship was found in the 17th century when they cleaned River Idzene. Of course, they didn't uh, preserve it. The second was basically part of the ship was found when they built uh, Galleria Centres, uh, the shop in the 30s. And this one was found in the 1938. All details you can see right now in the museum was uh, given to restorators and restorators started to restore them. Others were placed in the warehouse and warehouse was destroyed in the Second World War. So you can see from the pictures how well this uh, uh, ship was when it was found. Like all details were there. But how small it's like it came from to not nowadays. Here's a small model of this ship, so called the ship of Riga. These were used till the 12th century, till the beginnings of the 13th century. After that, they were replaced with Koge. Koge is a bigger ship. Uh, comes from the Germany, so the port of Riga from, um, from the river Rizim was located uh, near Daugava. And uh, when you will walk in old Riga, you will see this pavement uh, with the uh, name Rizene. In uh, 2001, Riga celebrated 800th anniversary. And in 10 places in old Riga where this river floated, they placed these special uh, pavement stones. Nowadays, in Aldriga, we have only two of them. I guess uh, eight of them are taken as a souvenirs. So come quick to Riga, because next year, maybe someone will, will take these two too. Uh, speaking about uh, uh, missionaries, they came here in the end of the 12th century. Uh, but these uh, citizens of Riga, to villages, they didn't allow to leave them, the, to live in Riga. So they went to Ixchile and the first Catholic church and the castle of Bishop was located in Ixchile. Uh, this is the St. Maynard's uh, Island. And there is this, uh, the church, which is the oldest church in, uh, in whole Latvia, basically. Uh, nowadays there is Dalgova, but originally it was, it was located on the hill. Uh, but when they made uh, 
hydroelectrical stations, uh, they flood these monuments and so they, they raise the level of Daugava. So that's why it's only on the island and you can walk to this uh, castle and church only one year, only one time a year in the August. And here you can see Riga Dome. Uh, bishop Albert, he was the third bishop of, uh, of Livonia and he founded Riga as a city. In uh, 1203, he founded the Sod Brother Order and in um, basically in uh, 1215, he starts to build Riga Dome as the main and the biggest uh, Catholic cathedral in uh, Baltic states, basically in Livonia. Uh, he built Rigodome together with monastery complex. So this one is from the square of Rigodome, from the streets. This is original entrance. In medieval times, you walk on the hill and then you walk inside the church. But uh, till nowadays, the cultural erg has grown eight meters. So you walk downstairs to enter the church. And this part is the other side of the church with the yard which was used as the graveyard in medieval times. It was used as a graveyard for more than 500 years. And when the Catherine II uh, made a law that you can't bury persons inside the church and near the cities, uh, it was used as the marketplace. And this is the place where the Museum of History of Riga is located. So uh, Riga Dome is built in the style of Gothic and the oldest parts are these. Uh, basically, the church was built in the shape of the cross, like this. And uh, you can try to imagine, like this part and this part is the oldest parts. Uh, but in 14th century, uh, Bishop uh, understood that the church is too small. So he divided it in both sides. They built this, the Gothic parts, the Riga Dome. These are Roman Romanesco parts from the windows. You can see they are different. And in 1541, the Riga Dome, this, the tower of Big Dome burned down, and the, the, this part is built in the style of Baroque. So three main styles of this church. What else about Riga Dome? Uh, in this part, there's the hierarchy. You can see, can you see there's a cross in this part on the top? Do you see the cross? No, basically there is the god or archbishop and then there is other citizens of Riga here. There, they go like this. So this is the golden knight. This is original made in the 19th century, uh, but it shows the history of uh, a Livonian order. Uh, in a 1203, Bishop Alberts found Livonian or uh, Bishop Swords of he found the Swords Brother Order, which was destroyed in 1236. And this was order which uh, basically the bishop was the boss of this order. And uh, in the 19th century, it was a very interesting time in the history of Latvia because all territory of Latvia was a part of the Russian Empire, but the Germans um, was the real rulers of the land, of the manor houses, and they wanted to show to the Russians that they, they brought culture here. So they made this golden knight, they made the statue of Bishop Alberts. This one is the great Christophs, and he is one of the miracles of the Riga city. We had three, and basically they are like floating bridge, which floated on the water. Uh, the giant who guards the Riga, Great Christops, and the bell which hangs outside the church. Uh, so uh, this statue comes from the 16th century, and it's very interesting because it's the part, it's the time when there is res there is there is reformation, and uh, mainly uh, people stop to believe in the saints. But Luther said that uh, Great Christops, it's okay because he shows how uh, how every uh, Christian should be. So the legend says that uh, great Christians lived in Riga and uh, in one evening uh, he, he heard that one child is crying, he finds the boy and boy begs me, begs Christophs to please bring me across Daugava. And Christophs places this boy on his shoulder and starts to cross Riga, cross, cross Daugava, sorry. 
And in the middle, middle of the river, he starts to feel that something is wrong because there is huge waves, uh, there is a wind, there is uh, thunder. And uh, every step he takes, this boy gets heavier and heavier. And Kristaps, uh, in one moment, thinks that he will drown together with this boy. But he crosses Daugava and he lets this boy to spend the night in his house because there is this thunderstorm. And next morning, he doesn't find the boy, he finds like a pill of gold and he continues to build Riga City and uh, builds Riga City as uh, like huge, very rich medieval city. And uh, the small boy symbolizes Jesus Christ and in every legend about St. Christophorus, uh, this boy gets heavier and heavier. Uh, speaking about the great Christops and St. Christophorus, in mm -hmm. medieval times, uh, people believed that he is the saint patron of those travelers who travel through the sea. Uh, so when citizens of Riga wanted to go to, go to Germany, uh, they came to the great Christops, they begged him, and then they gave in to the ship and traveled through the, through, the, through the Germany. And what's interesting, the traveling with the ships was the safest uh, way to travel in medieval times because uh, on the roads, there were uh, these uh, robbers who killed uh, these merchants and took uh, all their belongings. And nowadays, uh, St. Christophorus uh, are the guardian of those who drive the cars. For example, if you go to Poland, you will see near the, in the cars of, these, of the Polish, there is these, uh, these medallions with the St. Christophorus. Other thing is that citizens no. Believe that this uh, statue mm -hmm. has healing abilities. Someone sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and uh, when someone was ill, he came to the Christophs, begged. He made. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, someone is snoring. You can you can mute him, I guess. Yeah. Who is snoring? No, no one's no, no one. I'm too boring. So, no, it's okay. Uh, so, uh, when the, as I said, when a citizen of Riga was ill, he came to the Christops, uh, made a bind, uh, took it, placed it on the arms of the great Christops, um, uh, took another one and placed on his ill place, and this illness went away. So, that's our beliefs. And nowadays, uh, you will see there's a copy near Daugava, near the riverside of the Great Christops. But this is original. And that's the copy. Uh, speaking about the Blackhead's house. Uh, I said, Tom, have you been in Riga? Yeah? It you has saved your Riga. Ah, oh, Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I... I, I several times a week go past uh, Lilas Kristaps on the Daugava Krasla. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I saw that you are like nodding as you know that it's located in the riverside. So this is the Blackheads house. In the Basically in the 14th century, the Blackheads Association was founded in Riga. It's not a skin infection association in Riga. It's like unmarried German merchants chose uh, St. Mauritius as the same patron and uh, so it's like the name of this association. It's like very long, unmarried German merchant St. Mauritius Association. So usually citizens of Riga call them Blackheads. Uh, so this is the Blackheads house. Originally, it was built in the 14th century as Gothic building. And in the 16th, 17th century, it become uh, like got all these new details in the Swedish times, for example, these lions, all these four figures these two lions and for example there is saint george as the saint patron of uh, the knights this is the statue of rollands uh, the rollands was uh, if not i'm not mistaken he was a friend of charlemagne or carl the great the frank king and he was the uh, he's the symbol of all uh, basically north german cities and he's uh, is here too, because Riga was a German city. So these are like uh, uh, entrance stones of the Blackheads house. St. Mary 
uh, was the saint patron of uh, all uh, Livonian state. And that's why she you will see her in all medieval monuments like Riga Castle, uh, like in Tessis, and here in uh, the Blackheads House. It's here, she's standing on the crescent moon. And here you can see Saint Mauritius as the saint patron of this the Blackheads Association. Basically, in all on the all stools in the churches, you will see the symbol, which shows where these blackheads sat in medieval times and in the 17th century. And speaking about the Blahats house, uh, this is the copy. Because in the Second World War, all these buildings in the Rat House, near the Rat House, um, and the Rat Square was this, were destroyed in the Second World War. And here you can see these two dates, uh, one anno 1334, anno 1999. And this is completely new newly built before uh, 800th anniversary of Riga city. Originals, the basements are from the 16th century under this, the Blahats house. And this is the museum of occupation here, this black one. Right now it's it's located other side because there is a uh, restoration there. Uh, speaking about another interesting things, um, I will tell about some legends of Riga if it's okay. So in uh, 2010, a city founded the legend, found the legend that Riga has the oldest ornamented Christmas tree in whole world. And here you can see the ornament of the Christmas tree. This is from the 18th century. It was found in old Riga. In the, in the beginnings, archaeologists couldn't tell what's, what is it because there is, there's nothing similar to it ever in, in the world. But after that, they saw that hmm, it's the Christmas tree ornament. And uh, here you can see, okay, I will try to show a small film. I'm not sure if, you'll, if, you'll, if it will open. Ah, sorry, it's not, it's not opening. But uh, in the YouTube, uh, write down Christmas tree Riga, and you will see a movie about this Christmas tree, a small animation, basically. And the legend says that in uh, 1510, the Black Blackheads uh, took huge Christmas tree. And while, while they decided what to do with this tree, that when children decorated this Christmas tree with the apples, with the nuts and so on. And when blackheads came out, they saw that it's very beautiful and started this tradition every year in the Christmas time to decorate the Christmas tree. Before that, uh, the Christmas tree was just a tree without decorations. And of course, the, they were merchants and they uh, brought this idea to decorate Christmas trees to the Germany and then to the whole world. But the Christmas tree here is the oldest one. So this is this monument. Of course, when they found when we found this legend, Tallinn said that no, that they have oldest Christmas tree from the middle of the like 15th century. But no, uh, this association of the Christmas tree said that Riga has the oldest Christmas tree in the world. Uh, speaking about the medieval times. In the 13th century, in Riga, uh, two guilds were founded, the Great Guild and Small Guild. In Great Guild, all goldsmiths, uh, silversmiths, and the merchants were associated. And in Small Guild, all craftsmen were associated. Here you can see the Jean Baptiste, uh, the Saint Patron of the Small Guild. It's like the 15th century statue. And here you can see the Small Guild from nowadays. And there is some medieval rooms inside it, but this one was uh, rebuilt. The small guild was rebuilt in the middle of the 19th century. You can see it right here. Here was the river Rizne in medieval times. And this is the statue of uh, John Baptiste from the 19th century. So they wanted to link their history from the 19th century modern guild to the medieval guild of uh, 14th century. And uh, there was uh, uh, more than 38 different uh, tontes associated in this in small guild. And for example, key makers, tin makers, uh, weapon makers, uh, smiths, gold, like shoemakers, uh, weavers, and so on. 
all these uh, craftsmen were making everything the city needed. Uh, the Saint Patron of the Great Guild was a Saint Mary in the middle of this uh, chandelier, and the twelve apostles are holding are holding candlesticks. And uh, starting from the 14th century, there was three main forces who ruled Riga. One was the Archbishop of Riga, the second is uh, the Master of Livonian Order, and third was uh, Citizens or the City Council, Rate. And this is one of the oldest coat of arms of Riga City. Do you know which animal sits in the gates of Riga City? Pig? No. Or originally, nowadays. Don't look there. Try to guess. Cat? A, no, a lion. Uh, but we do not have lions in, Riga, in Latvia. So the person who made this coat of arm didn't know how lion looked like. So he made it from his, uh, his imaginary. And uh, there is a legend that uh, they tried to make to brought some lions here. Of course, they were dead and well, the travel was quite long. So they made from that remainings. And uh, you know that uh, in a, uh, the God made human as uh, the Lord of the land. But the lion is the king of animals. So this person who made this coat of farm made the head who looks like the human head and the paws of the lion here. But originally it's, it's the lion. Uh, if, the, is, if this one is too scary, then please tell me, I will turn it uh, on to next one. Uh, this is the real hand cut off from a money forger. In medieval times, there was uh, the city executor or hangman and uh, he he was doing uh, these public executioners executions in uh, the uh, the house. and this one is the hand. Uh, the right one was cut off from the thieves, and the left one was cut off from the money forgers. Basically, they cut off the hand, which was the sinner hand. The hand with what this uh, person was making this sin. Uh, why right hand? from the thief because in that time there was not not left-handed people basically how many of you are left-handed handed me only one and uh, i'm the second one uh, so of course they thought that uh, the thief is thieving with his uh, right hand so it was cut off if uh, the thief continued to uh, continue to stole there was a mark the metal uh, placed in his on his forehead, so everyone in city saw that uh, uh, this person is a thief. Uh, their left hand was cut off to the money forger because he was holding this instrument to make false coins. Here on the top of this of uh, of this picture, you can see these false coins. And it's very interesting uh, why the hangman collected these hands and why they are standing still nowadays, because they are from the 16th century, like 500 years old. Uh, there is an idea that maybe he wanted to sell them to pharmacists to make some medicine. Uh, these are the war drummers from the 17th century. In um, 1721, Riga became a part of Swedish state, and Riga was the biggest Swedish city, bigger than Stockholm in that time. In uh, so, yeah, in 1688, uh, two, 20 drummers were made. 18 was simple like this one, and two was with mechanism. Mechanism is inside the back of this uh, drummer, and when someone stepped on the secret mechanism, this uh, drummer started to drum and turned his head to right and left. Basically one of the first robots. And there is the idea that it's one of the al first alarm systems uh, because these drummers uh, were standing in Swedish kazarms uh, and was like guarding uh, their possessions. And this boot belongs to the Swedish king Karl XII. And uh, in, uh, in the war, 
uh, with Peter the Great, he lost both of his boots. And uh, one is located in Riga, there is located in Tallinn. And uh, yeah, it's one of our, like, our royal items. And here you can see the cup. Uh, when Peter the Great uh, conquered Riga in 1710, he drank a wine from this cup. Uh, after that, he left this cup in Riga. It belonged to a German family. And in 19th century, uh, this, uh, their manor was burning down. There was a fire and they tossed this cup outside the window. And after that, they made this box, like boxes 100 years younger than the cup itself. And now uh, we can start to make our rutsenis. So it would be very great if you turn on your picture so I can see what you are doing if you're not sleeping. Hello? <laughs> okay, are you ready? Do you have scissors? Scissors, thread and a button. No. So, are you ready? <laughs> okay. You can turn on your, your microphone so I can uh, speak with you too. <laughs> and if you have some questions, are you ready? Trushmin? Trushmin, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So, can I start? So, uh, we are taking this thread. Uh, I will, uh, basically, mine is too fine, so I am using, so here you can see things that you're needing. Scissors, big button, and the thread. Usually I'm using those, the thread, which is meant for uh, coaching, I forgot the name. So here you can see, as I said, if your thread is too narrow, you can make three of them. Yeah, this is how it looks. And Then we are making like this, both ends of the thread in each hole of the button. Yeah. I'm making it too, so it's like working with you two together. So how are you going? Is everything fine? Make a nod so I can understand. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I see the Tom has finished his. Yeah, then make a knot. It should be looking like this. 
and then see where I am so I can see what you can't see like this, the button in the middle. So then you are like turning it like this. Yeah, correct, Roberts. And then you are making it like this. Ah. <laughs> so, and it's making a sound. That's why it's roots and it's like rotor. And it's a tie from the 12th century. So, can you hear? Just turn it faster. Like this. Man savukārt ir jautājums, vai kaut kur vēl tāda ir, vai tikai pie mums? Robert, jums Vācijā ir šāds? Ne? No? Ir? 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 Vai Jā. jums arī tāda spēle ir? Nu tā. <laughs> I can hear it. Jā. How others are going? <laughs> now, now is time for the second generation. <laughs> <laughs> You're making another another one. Yeah, the first one, the string was too heavy. Ah. <laughs> Can and I don't have a button, just a Coke bottle lid. Mm -hmm. Aiga, can you explain please again what uh, is the meaning? It's an, it, it's a toy. Uh, it's a toy, it's a toy from, from, uh, from the 12th century, from the middle, medieval times. Yeah, that's what you showed us, but without a button, but with... Um, I, I saw a picture that you showed in your presentation yeah. with a, a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Now you want to see that one? Uh, I will try to go back to that one. So, sorry, I will have to find it very fastly. Ah, then I will speak about childhood too. Mm. Yeah, this one. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Is it that? I guess so. It's this one. Uh, we made a modern version of this one yeah. because uh, if I asked you to get uh, bone. the bone from the pig's uh, leg, <laughs> it, would <laughs> be, <laughs> it will be too extreme. Yeah. I think it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we are making it with the button. Uh, speaking about the childhood in that time, the childhood ends in this, when the child is six years old. Then uh, he was considered as adult. Six not so years. strong, not so big, but and then an adult. And uh, yeah. And why six years? Because uh, the children died. And so when they lived to the six year old, they, they were like so strong to live and to become adults. And that's why this uh, six year old period of the childhood. So, how are you feeling? Can we move oh. on? Poor Veggie. <laughs> Super. You want to love it. <laughs> I hope I don't speak too fast because I was like, wow, there is uh, 25 minutes left. <laughs> Tell you more. So, our hands. 
this one, this, 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 this. Uh -huh. Okay, I will show you some uh, pictures of the cross uh, gallery of uh, Rigodome. It's other part of uh, our museum. So here you can see Rigodome uh, cross gallery, the yard of uh, uh, this cross gallery, uh, Dom Schule, or the oldest school in Baltic states, founded in the 13th century when uh, Bishop Alberts uh, built Rigadom Cross Gallery. He built the, the, the school. And uh, basically, the future um, workers in the church was uh, were learning in this school. Yeah, here you can see Stadtbibliothek. It's uh, this bibliothek, a library you saw. Uh, the column hall. And this is the old Dom school. Uh, it's not from the medieval times, from the 14th century, but it's uh, from the 16th century. And this building was destroyed and the entrance building of the Museum of History of Riga were built. So this is only part of our museum. Uh, cross gallery is built in the shape of letter, letter U, like, uh, like this. So there is three of these uh, galleries. And uh, there was idea to, um, there is ideas that uh, maybe there was a fort near the, the wall of Figa Dome because there was some details found in the ground in archaeological excavations, but we can't prove it. Uh, the Museum of History of Frigga Navigation places in the cross gallery the most heaviest things of our, co of our collections, for example, the cannons and some monuments. Yep. Uh, in the end of the 19th century, Riga Dome and the uh, previous monastery complex uh, was restored and it was so-called romantic restoration. So their archaeologists and architects wanted to restore only one main style and they chose Gothic. Uh, that's why they wait, sorry, destroyed the, the second and the third floor of these buildings and built neo-Gothic uh, second and the third floor. So here is the museum in these parts. As I said, this yard was used as the graveyard in the medieval times. Uh, usually, the monks and the students of the Dom school were buried in this yard. Uh, Riga Dom originally has three cemeteries. One is the yard, the second is in the side, inside the church, and the third one is located in the Dom Square, where like uh, citizens of Riga were buried. And, uh, uh, the cemetery were closed in uh, 1772 uh, by Catherine II when she made a law to close all uh, cemeteries, which is located inside the city. And after that, the great cemetery or Lilia Rigescapi were founded uh, outside the city. After that, uh, the yard was used as a marketplace. There were two entrances diagonally, you can cross uh, this yard. Uh, these windows of the gallery were uh, closed and uh, the cross gallery uh, was used as the warehouse of these merchants. Oh, I've turned. Here you can see there is this, uh, this small uh, building and only here in this building they found original medieval windows of the cross gallery and after that they could uh, restorate all these windows. And this building was located somewhere here originally. So here you can see the column hall from other side. Usually we are telling that uh, Cumberland built column hall, but basically he built whole building, the second and the third floor. And uh, he built column hall, then there is this uh, two round cabinets and the third floor. And this is built 100 years later in the end of the 19th century, but architects uh, thought that they need to copy this classicism style in here. So they look similar, but basically this part is 100 years younger than this. Here you can see Astrolabe, which is the symbol of the museum, because in all these three wings, museum is located. 
Uh, this one is the grave of uh, Hildebrand. He was the Archbishop of Riga uh, from the 15th century, basically one of the last uh, Catholic Archbishops here before uh, Reformation. And uh, his grave was found in, uh, in the ends of the 80s, 1988. And uh, it's right now in quite a bad shape. Uh, last year they started to restore it, but I guess uh, the COVID and the lack of money stopped this process. So right now it looks like this. So it's look like uh, four years ago. And uh, this building is tonsory. You know that monks have uh, here, they have special hairstyle called Tonsura. And this uh, hairstyle was cut here in this tonsory. Uh, near it uh, was uh, the well. And uh, yeah, that's why it's called tonsory, where they cut their hairs. It, the building is built in the ends of the 19th century in the, in the time of restoration because they found uh, uh, the base of some medieval building and architects thought, hmm, the tonsory is here. 100%, so they built this one. Uh, this is the vessel of, for the baptism from the 19th century. I th th thought that uh, the original one from the 13th century doesn't look like gothical one because it's it's round. There is no gothical uh, animals on it. It's very simple. So he made this neo-gothical uh, vessel for the baptism, and it's located in uh, in Tonsori. And the bells. Uh, right now, these bells hangs inside the tower of Rigodome. A few years uh, before, uh, before the restoration, uh, they were too heavy to put them on on the tower, so they stood in the yard. Nowadays, they are up there. And this one is the bell of Rigodome. Others, other six uh, came from Germany. They closed one church and they gave these bells as a present to the Riga Dome. So here you can see uh, Domkirche or the Dome Church uh, bell from the 1792. Uh, the Bishop Albert. This is one of the statues made by the Germans in the end of the 19th century. As I said, they wanted to show that uh, they have ruled these territories starting from the 12th century. So they made uh, the, this uh, golden knight, which symbolizes the master of Livonian order. And they made this uh, Bishop Alberts, which stood uh, in Riga Dome. Uh, but in the First World War, uh, Russian Empire decided to evacuate all the monuments made from bronze uh, to St. Petersburg. And the ship drowned in 1915. Uh, they found only the monument of Peter the Great and uh, the monument of uh, original monument of Bishop Albert still lays some somewhere in the Baltic Sea. So this is the copy made to 2001 when Riga celebrated 800th anniversary. And here you can see one of the coat of arms of uh, German families who donated more than 500 golden rubles for restoration of Riga Dome and the Cross Gallery. Uh, usually in the summer times, uh, before the COVID, the German families came to Latvia, they visited Riga Dome and they tried to find their coat of arms because there is like 40 of them, of these coat of arms. So this is one of them. Uh, this one is the old rooster of Riga Dome made in the ends of uh, 16th century. As I said, in 1541, Riga Dome, uh, the tower of Riga Dome burned down. It destroyed the first organs of Riga Dome and it destroyed the tower and the first rooster, if there was one. And after they rebuilt uh, the tower, they made this rooster and placed it on top of this uh, square of the tower. And there's a legend that this, that this rooster uh, was colored in two colors, gold and black. And um, you know, Driga is the trader city. And if there was a good wind for the trade and ships could, ships could uh, come from the Baltic Sea uh, to Riga, to the port of Riga, he turned his golden side, symbolizing there will be gold. The trade will be good. And if the wind was bad, he turned its black side, 
to the city showing that uh, no trade, no money, and basically very bad days. Uh, you can see, but there is a uh, bullet holes in the rooster. So uh, some someone has shot a rooster, maybe in uh, in the war times. And there is this uh, text uh, that, uh, for example, here is uh, that Hans Vogels uh, made me in 1595. Uh, Matthias Keplisch uh, made my tail in 1666. Here you can see uh, a small copy of the monument of uh, Peter the Great. In um, 1910, uh, Riga celebrated its 200th anniversary when Riga is a part of Russian Empire. And uh, in 1909, year, one year before that, the uh, city wanted to make six meters long uh, high monument of bronze of Peter the Great. Uh, they made this monument, placed it in the place where Monument of Freedom is located right now. It stood there till 1915. And after that, it was evacuated. Uh, the ship drowned. And in the 30s, uh, Estonian, um, uh, not the drowners, but those who are like uh, uh, searching water under the water. For divers. Divers, yes. Uh, they found uh, this uh, monument and uh, Riga brought it back. It was restored, and uh, there is a copy of this uh, monument. Uh, one uh, very rich citizen of Riga made a copy, gave it to the Riga city as a gift for 800th anniversary. It stood near a canal of Riga city, and then the uh, city said that we do not need this monument because. Uh, uh, Peter the Great conquered Riga, but uh, he was merciless ruler. And uh, when he came to Riga, he poisoned wells, he burned down the fields of grains and everything, and killed many Latvians. And that's why we do not need this one. That's why right now this monument of Peter the Great stands in the private uh, auto park in the middle. Base. Basically, you drive the car and then you see this uh, huge Peter the Great. Uh, these are the cannons. Um, before the Second World War, we had uh, the biggest cannon collection in Latvia, but some of them were lost in the Second World War. So, Mortira, the cannon. This one was used to destroy the fortification walls. This was used to show, uh, to destroy buildings inside the fortification walls because uh, this one should strike. And this one shoot like this across the fortification wall to destroy the buildings inside the fortification systems. And in medieval times, only a few people knew how to read. So how they orient, how they walked and find the right address in Old Riga. In all buildings, there was uh, these plates. For example, here you can see the pigeon and uh, uh, if someone wanted to go to the pigeon warehouse, he saw this and knew where he needed to go. This is the symbol from the uh, stone plaque of the, of the cemetery. Basically, this is from the 17th century because starting from the 17th century, they start to place these on these uh, gray plaques. And uh, starting from 15th century, uh, the burial place in the church was rented for 99 years. And when family was, uh, uh, for example, destroyed, they couldn't continue this rent. The bones were taken out, placed in the bone chamber, and this place was rented to the new family. And usually these stone blocks were, in, were, were reused. Uh, you made your own sigil on it. And this one, is a monument to Paolucci. Uh, in, uh, 12, in 1812, uh, Napoleon went to the Russia. And uh, of course, the citizens of Riga thought that he will come through Riga. And they burned down uh, Vizemes uh, suburbia. And after that, Paolucci, uh, he was Italian, he rebuilt Riga, uh, these uh, Vizemes uh, suburbia. And uh, Citizens of Riga 
uh, were very grateful for him and they wanted to make a monument for that for, for Paolucci and Paolucci said no I don't need this monument and that's why citizens of Riga made the monument like this the originally idea was to make a huge uh, statue of Paolucci like uh, you saw similar to Peter the Great, for example, Paolucci on the horse or Paolucci standing like this. And Paolucci said, no, I don't need that one. So they made very simple um, monument. And the original is located in uh, Vermans Park. This is the copy. So writing here is a bit wrong. So it is it is a monument for Paolucci and it is not because Paolucci is not men mentioned in this monument. But basically it is. And in 17th century, when Riga was a part of uh, the Swedish state, uh, Swedes made a completely new water system for the Riga. Uh, these are the oak pipes with the uh, metal uh, details, ecological one. They served for 200 years. After that, they were replaced with these ceramic ones. And this is this uh, very famous uh, grape made from the bricks in the 12th, 13th century. This one is the head of Salaspils. Uh, basically, uh, Riga is built on the sands. We do not have huge stones in Riga. And those peasants who came from countryside, they need, don't need stones on the fields. So they brought the stones from the countryside to Riga city. So the stone makers could make, for example, bases to the crosses in the cemeteries. And this stone was, uh, um, came from Salaspils in the middle of the 19th century. The stone maker started to make the flat top to make the cross here. And then he saw that there is the face and he gave this uh, stone to the museum because in that time museum is open. And what's interesting, it stood in our exposition for more than 30 years from the 50s till 90s and then it's, it was lost. We do not know where it was, uh, what happened with it. And only in, 2000, uh, in the year 2000, there was archaeological excavations in the yard of Riga Dome and we found it uh, buried inside the mid in the middle of this yard and we don't know why it's it was taken out from exposition and buried inside the ground it's like mystery for us uh, why they did it other things uh, usually uh, like every year there is some people who who says that they have the sixth sense and one and they are like one said that uh, this head is very evil like go around it, others saying that it's very good, so you can choose whom to believe. And we don't know how old it is. It could be from the Bronze Age and it could be from the 16th century. And uh, basically we need to find original place uh, where it stood, then there would be archeological excavations. We could find some pottery, some coins, and then we could date it, how old it is. But nowadays only riddle, we, are, we don't know how old it is and we don't know what uh, what it sh what it shows? Uh, this is the Saint Mary. Original is located in the castle of Riga. As I said, she is the Saint Patron of Livonia. That's why she is built in the medieval castle. This is the copy. Original is there. And this is Walter von Plettenberg. He is uh, basically uh, almost the last uh, master of Livonian order. After Reformation, he made the act of religious freedom, so citizens of Livonia could choose remain Catholics or become uh, Lutheranics. And it's very modern uh, law in that time, because in Europe there is Reformation, Contra-Reformation, there is bloody struggles. In these, in, in Riga, there is only like uh, two main struggles. First is uh, a so-called when they destroyed uh, all altars in the Catholic Church after Reformation in 1524, and other is uh, when um, when there was so called when the when there was this change in calendar where Pope uh, said that you need to change calendar to be and uh, Lutheric said no we we don't want to change the calendar in the in the beginnings of uh, the 17th century and th and that's it. Basically, we lived quite freely. 
and friendly with each other. So, and that's why um, basically he rebuilt Riga Castle in 1550. That's why there is this statue of him. So there is another wing of cross gallery, and that's it. Some of the details from the medieval times. So I have finished. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank Good you. Ideas. Yeah. All this. All this. Very interesting. Ari man. All this. Come and visit museum when you can. Ja, nu, es ļoti ceru, kā jau es saku, ka, nu, nākam gad jau varēs, un tad varēs atbraukt un apmeklēt visus muzejus arī klātienē. Jā, cerams, cerams. Jā. Varbūt kādam jautājumu vēl kādi ir? Visiem, visi skaidrs. Feedback. Komentāri. Jā, could I ask a question? Jā, sure. I, about the house of the blackheads, I've mm -hmm. never understood, like, because the blackheads were Swedish, right? No, Germans. No? Germans, ah, they were Germans. Ah, okay. But they were black or this was some metaphorical... Uh... It's metaphorical. Uh, they chose St. Mauritius, who was black, as the same ah. patron. And that's why okay. they're called uh, the blackheads. How dear. Yeah, loads of. And nice. is the <laughs> museum working now? The uh, museum is open and it's working, yes. You can visit it. Um, I, I'm a little confused with the name of your museum. I was expecting a lecture about um, ships and navigation and boats and things, but <laughs> is, is that also in your museum? Have you chosen um, things to show us that you think are um, interesting and different? Um, uh, we spoke with Sarmite and then we chose this, uh, the city, basically the history of Friga and how right. citizens of Friga lived in medieval times would be more suitable for you. Yeah, so if I was to visit your museum when I can, I will see lots of things, not just navigation. Change to... No, 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 no. Uh, since uh, 1964, we are called the Museum of History of Friga Navigation because uh, basically in the end of the 19th century, there was a huge uh, uh, exposition dedicated to navigation. And from this exposition, we got collection. And after that, uh, we uh, got this second branch of research, navigation. Uh, yeah. But navigation is uh, only two halls. We have 16 halls. In the 14, we are showing the history of Friga. Oh, and oh. only in two, we are showing history of navigation. Right. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this man, Ari. Yeah, because museum. Yeah. Yeah. Rekam. No, labi. Yes, paldies jums. Paldies. Tad jau uz tikšanos citā reizē, klātienē. Un jaukas brīvdienas. Es jākušās. Labi. Pagaidām visu. Paldies jums! Paldies! 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 Paldies!